using this? Because it comes from it's China. Racist. It's not racist at all. No, not at all. It comes from China. Oh! I think they definitely do need me. I'm on my way. The only thing spreading faster than the coronavirus is misinformation and racism. Gee, there's a bug, there's a flu, there's a virus. I didn't know what it was in China. And I said, uh-oh, that doesn't sound good. The coronavirus, officially known as COVID-19, was first observed in China in November of 2019. It has since infected more than 100,000 people, caused thousands of deaths, and been labeled as a global pandemic by the World Health Organization. Yet not much is still known about the spread of the virus or how to fight it. As the panic has spread, warnings to avoid Asians and Asian-populated areas have gone viral. Viral? Viral? Was she making a joke? But our favourite online publication Vice did do an article saying of course people are making racist memes about the coronavirus. The political correctness we keep hearing about sure hasn't stopped people from showing their anti-Asian prejudices. There's the barrage of jokes about how dating Asian women is temporarily unsafe. <clears throat> or expressing fear about Asian people coughing in public. Then there was the quickly deleted reassurance from UC Berkeley's University Health Services official Instagram account where people of Asian descent compose 29% of the student body that xenophobia is nothing more than a common reaction to news about the novel coronavirus. Of course, that common reaction doesn't tend to extend to outbreaks that begin in European countries like mad cow disease, or in North America like swine flu. I'm sorry, I, <laughs> I obviously forgot about the time that mad cow disease or swine flu shut down the entire global economy, but... <laughs> Social media has been filled with racist posts against Asians. Look, I can understand how something like coronavirus can cause racism, but if you seriously think that the sentence coronavirus has entered the chat room with the bat and bowl emoji is racist, you need to get your head checked. Some even blame the outbreak on claims like, Chinese people eat bats. The fact is, some people in China do eat bats. However, bats are also consumed by people all over the world. Notably, more commonly consumed meats like beef, pork, and chicken can also transmit potential disease, most famously mad cow disease, swine flu, and salmonella. Yet nobody was vilified for still eating pork during the 2009 swine flu pandemic. Well, she has a point, but you have to also point out that pork is the most widely consumed meat in the world, followed by poultry, beef, and then mutton. Um, can't remember bats being the most widely consumed meat in the world, and uh, to be honest, whatever this is. Or this. Or maybe this. <laughs> In a recent article, Live Science writes, In the US, between April 2009 and April 2010, the CDC estimates there were 60.8 million cases of swine flu with over 274,000 hospitalizations and nearly 12,500 deaths. That's a mortality rate of about 0.02%. The mortality rate for the novel coronavirus is much higher so far, around 2%, although the number will likely change as more people are tested. That may not sound like a big difference, but when extrapolated can mean millions more deaths. The H1N1 flu, or swine flu, was also less contagious than the novel coronavirus. The basic reproduction number, also called the R0 value, is the expected number of individuals who can catch the virus from a single infected person. For the 2009 H1N1 virus, the mean R0 value was 1.46, according to a review published in the journal BMC Infectious Diseases. For the novel coronavirus, the R0 value is estimated to be between 2 and 2.5 at the moment. Just because food practices may differ from one culture to the next, it does not inherently mean they are wrong. Uh, the girl in the previous clip was eating a live octopus. Surely eating an animal that's alive is wrong? No? Whatever your culture? Well, apart from China. In reality, scientists don't yet know exactly where this coronavirus originated. China, China, China. Taiwan, we 
we've had zero deaths reported by the World Health Organization because we are not recognized by the World Health Organization. I think coronavirus was just so vague for Trump that they had to change it to COVID-19, you know what I mean? Like, coronavirus sounds very vague and like, Mystical. COVID-19, that sounds like a Guatemalan street gang. And that's something he would want to take down, right? <laughs> <laughs> hilarious, but not as hilarious as dyeing one part of your hair blonde and wearing that awfully hideous t-shirt. But I mean, he's got a point. If you can joke about the coronavirus and also have a dig at Trump, I mean, why not? I mean, the people seem to be laughing. These COVID-19 guys, they're bad hombres. It's like, okay. Well. There was all this stuff that was happening in the news that was very, um, it seemed really scary. Something new was happening. Is it the second SARS? Is it the second MERS, etc.? And Esther and I just kept talking about how we were hearing all of these like really gross jokes in the community, not from other Asians, but just like other people. Oh, she was so close to saying white people, not Asian people, other people. She also could have said Trump, I'm surprised. Not Asian people, Trump. Just making fun of how Asians eat food how we live our lives and we got mad. And that's what this show is about, is about fighting back on the xenophobia that really kicked off exactly at the same time as Lunar New Year. So you're looking for a Chinese Chinese person that did not go home for Christmas, New Year, and Chinese New Year? I'm sorry, a real Chinese Chinese would have gone home for at least one. You're looking for a fake Chinese. A Chinese disowned by their family. Because they do stand up comedy. She's laughing and joking, but I'm sure it's true. You can almost hear her angst. Although it's been a really funny experience for me to experience racism in a very different way. This like newfound experience of racism of like because of my skin color I'm more prone to be getting this disease is very very odd. And honestly my goal is that today we're not just attracting an Asian audience but an audience of all different colors because we're going through this all together. And this disease doesn't affect only Asians but everybody else as well. What are you scared of? Are you scared of the symptoms? Are you scared of dying from it? In that case, no, because you're not old. Unless you're old, then I'm sorry. That sucks. Um. Life Science writes, Italy now has the highest number of deaths in the world from COVID-19, the disease caused by the new coronavirus. As of Friday, March 27th, the country had reported more than 9,100 deaths, according to Worldometer, a website tracking COVID-19 cases. And the country's fatality rate from COVID-19 at 10% is much higher than the global average of 3.4%, according to the World Health Organization. One factor affecting the country's death rate may be the age of its population. Italy has the oldest population in Europe, with about 23% of residents 65 or older. The median age in the country is 47.3, compared with 38.3 in the United States, the Times reported. Many of Italy's deaths have been among people in their 80s and 90s, a population known to be more susceptible to severe complications from COVID-19. But who cares? They're old. Old people should die. We don't care about them. <laughs> I feel like there's something with comedy, like, when you make fun of it, you take charge of it. What's better? Let's hush hush not talk about it, or let's bring attention to it and bring entertainment to it. In your case, hush hush. I mean, by being hush hushing, like, who's learning more or less? Disgusted. Coronavirus is spreading infection, but is it also spreading racism? Oh. Dirty scum eating anything that moves, then spreading their dirty virus to everyone? This is why I don't eat Chinese food, you know? I mean, I get that dirty scum is unwarranted, but did they, re <laughs> did they really have to play that video at the same time? I mean, they could have picked a better video of someone eating, like, a chicken breast? No, they had to pick this girl eating this. I've, uh, I'm uneducated. I don't know what that is. There's more than 40,000 cases of coronavirus worldwide. It originated in Wuhan, China. But the pandemic is also bringing something else to the surface. A French newspaper just called the virus Yellow Peril. An Instagram post by the University of Berkeley casually mentioned xenophobia as a normal reaction to the panic. And then there are the racist incidents. 
And closer to home, a lot of us have likely heard jokes mocking Chinese people and culture in the past few weeks. While some may argue that these reactions are just a result of fear and panic, Western notions that Asians are incompatible with the West, uncivilized, dirty, disgusting, disease carriers and eat weird food Jesus Christ, Susan. I mean, let it all out. have a long history. But a lot of the most racist stereotypes and jokes center around Chinese food. Trolls even went after this video of a blogger eating bat soup three years ago, which wasn't even taken in China. Coronavirus is believed to have originated from a seafood and wildlife market in Wuhan. Scientists think that bats or snakes could have been the initial carriers. And while it's true that wildlife markets do pose legitimate health concerns, some of these animals are only eaten by a minority in China. But it's led to a flood of racist tropes around what all Chinese people supposedly eat. There have been previous outbreaks of swine and bird flu, but we haven't heard the same level of global objection over eating pigs and birds. Is this just because it's culturally acceptable in the West? Well, you heard it here first. Next time when you're peckish, if you want to be less bigoted, don't opt for poultry or beef or pork. Opt for something else, something more exotic and accepting. And while coronavirus is a health emergency, so far it seems to have low fatality rates. Some people without compromised immune systems have actually recovered. In fact, if you live in the US, the common flu kills between 12 and 61,000 Americans each year and is actually a much bigger threat than coronavirus. This doesn't underplay how serious the outbreak is in China, but it also certainly isn't an excuse for racism and fear-mongering. Now she has a point there's no excuse for being racist. What bugs me though is that saying that it came from China or calling it the Wuhan virus is apparently racist. Back to Vice, our favourite online newspaper for another brilliant article. From the Spanish flu to Chinese virus, the dark history of naming disease, President Trump and some Republicans are coming up with stigmatising nicknames for the coronavirus. The 1918 flu pandemic that infected over a quarter of the world's population is still referred to as the Spanish flu, even though there's no consensus on where that outbreak originated. Spain just happened to have the most reliable reporting at the time, as other countries censored their press to boost morale during World War I. And if we go to the Wikipedia page for the Spanish flu, it says, Nearly a century after the Spanish flu struck in 1918-1920, health organisations moved away from naming epidemics after geographical places. More modern terms for this virus include the 1918 influenza pandemic, the 1918 flu pandemic, or variations of those. Which is odd, because if you look at the annotations at the end, specifically 17 and 18, they refer to this article, Influenza Pandemic of 1918-1919, of the Encyclopedia Britannica, 4th of March 2020, and What the 1918 Flu Pandemic Can Teach Us About COVID-19 in Four Charts, retrieved 20th of March 2020, originally published on the 18th of March 2020. Hmm, it seems like we're backtracking. It's weird that these articles are suddenly popped up a month ago, and that up until a month ago, apparently, we called it the Spanish flu, but no longer. We now call it the 1918 flu pandemic. That's just, that's just odd. An article by Common Dreams says, Racist President Trump refuses to accept how racist it is to keep calling COVID-19 the Chinese virus. This pattern of conflating race with a specific disease is a constant thread in American history. According to recent statements by Ted Rolafra, the Director General of the World Health Organization, stigma, to be honest, is more dangerous than the virus itself. While Trump, in his remarks on Wednesday, echoed a slew of right-wing commentary of recent days by claiming it's not racist, not at all, to use the phrase, that is simply a self-serving lie. So basically, Trump calls it the China virus, and then someone goes back onto Wikipedia and tries to erase the fact that the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic was called Spanish flu, but actually is just called the 1918 flu pandemic. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, how the man running the World Health Organization is a career politician who worked for a communist junta and became its first non-doctor director general following intense lobbying from Beijing. Ha, <laughs> now that's funny.